Okay, so we can understand how flow works and obviously where it should be fitted. Um, what I thought I would do is give you a little bit of a description on how your water system works. Now what we'll also do is we'll talk about um, drain cocks underneath uh, the caravan, we'll also talk about uh, stop cocks and we'll talk about outside taps and faucets. So just uh, using this property here, what normally happens is, is that water travels up out of the ground goes along underneath uh, the property itself and goes up into the caravan. Now, what happens is, this would be the pipe coming out of the ground. You will have a stopcock like this. Now, this is usually provided by the site, and what it allows them to do is disconnect the property without water continuing to come out so they can turn that off. It may be different. It may look like a lever of some sort, um, but this is just for demo purposes. So, what happens then is this pipe would normally be a lot longer, it's just for demo, but um, it will travel into a reducer. Now, what happens is this reducer will bring this pipe down to a domestic water pipe size. Now, on the property itself, such as the caravan or park home, what you will have is another stopcock here. Um, it, it could be a plastic type, it could be a brass type, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. And what that does is it allows you to be able to turn the water supply off to the caravan itself. So then the pipe will continue on, just a short piece, right, and usually this is right underneath the front door. And what it will do then is it will disappear up into the caravan itself. So what happens whenever that goes up into the caravan? How is the water system then laid out? Well, let me show you in a diagram. So as we discussed before, um, the water comes up out of the ground and it meets its first stopcock and that allows the property to be disconnected and to stop any water, further water coming out. The, then a blue alkathene or black alkathene pipe will generally come along the ground until it meets this reducer. Now this reducer will then bring this pipework down to a more domestic uh, water pipe size. Now it is usually around about at this point that you will find that an outside water tap or faucet has been fitted. And basically, this is how it would work. So you've got your water tap and then you've got your tee um, here, which would tee off at this point. Um, moving forward, then you've got the stopcock that's right underneath the property itself. And that might be an easier access point to turn off your water. After that point, the water then travels up into the property itself. The cold water then comes in where it will then split, okay? And the top branch here travels off to the cold water tap or faucet at the kitchen then onto the tap at the bathroom, onto the cold side of the shower, and then into the toilet. Now, if the property also has an ensuite, you'll have a cold water tap at the wash hand basin in the ensuite, and then indeed the toilet again. What you'll also have here is the lower branch of cold water goes into then the boiler, okay, where the water is then heated. That hot water then travels off to the kitchen, off to the bathroom, into the shower, Obviously, it's not going to go off to the toilet uh, and the ensuite wash hand basin. And again, there wouldn't be one going into the ensuite toilet. You would also have cold water taps traveling into the likes of washing machines and dishwashers and so on. Now, what <coughs> we're going to do is find an area where we can actually connect flow onto. So, using this pipe, it would make sense to connect flow at this point here. Okay, and then the pipework will travel up into the property. What that means is that you can use either stopcock here to stop the water supply um, traveling up above. Once we connect the pipework on here, flow itself, once we operate it, okay, is going to provide air, which is going to push down into here. Okay, and then what it's going to do is push air throughout the system and as long as you open each particular outlet including toilets, showers uh, and wash hand basins what it's going to do is push the water out of here, water out of here and so on and by the time you're finished right to the end your system will be, uh, will be completely empty of water. Okay, so now that you've got your new flow, I thought we would take a bit of time to see what's in the box. So first of all, let's take a look at your flow unit. It's uh, made of ABS uh, fire retardant plastic. You will see that there are vents in the side so that it can draw in air. So uh, wherever you do side it, say like a boiler cupboard or whatever, try not to um, put coats uh, up against that are over it um, while it's actually operating because it has to draw in that air. Now having children myself, um, we have also put guards in here so that um, if a child is bored and decides to stick something through, because it is um, AC electric, it means that the, they are protected in there. Um, so what we have on top here, we have our on-off switch. Um, so 
uh, at the bottom we have our AC cable and then we have our airline coming out of the bottom and I'll talk about that in a wee second. Um, up on top here you will see that you have got two closed uh, flanges, attachment flanges, and at the bottom you have got two open flanges. Now the reason why they're open is so that you can put in a couple of screws into the wall and then just slot that down uh, on top of them. Make sure that it's levelled um, before then putting in the two screws at the top. So that's the flow box itself um, and its, uh, it's whole design is to uh, take in air and compress it up to 15 psi. The beauty of that box is that it will um, stop and restart automatically. Um, it will stop at 15 psi. That is your indicator to open up your, your outlet. Um, and then when you open the outlet, it will sense that the pressure has dropped and it will automatically restart, uh, obviously trying to build up to 15 psi again. But it will continue to push out the water as your outlet is open and it's when you close the outlet, um, then the, the, the pressure will start to rise four, five, six, up to the, the 15. Okay, so that's the box itself. Now, um, to attach it to the wall, we've given you uh, two types of fittings here. First of all, you've got a, a screw type. In a lot of cupboards, um, boiler cupboards, you will find that you have just a 19 millimeter thick uh, wood or three quarters of an inch um, and if that is the case then that's fine you can use these on the other hand if it is a hollow wall uh, what we've supplied you with are four butterfly bolts here and basically how these work is you push them through a larger hole which you would need to drill and I'll show you how to do that in a second but once they push through the hole the butterflies open up and then you just need to tighten and it pulls against the wall you may be familiar with them already okay so Next, what we have uh, are the um, anti-vibration washers. Okay, I'll show you in a sec how they go. Then we have little modesty caps, these little white um, retainers, and then you have black caps which clip over the top of those. Really, they're just to make it look uh, tidy. Okay, moving on, um, what we have to be able to connect to the airline, we have supplied you with two different types of push fit connections. If you're going to have flow where the uh, airline is going to travel straight down out of the bottom and through the floor, what you would do then uh, is you would use the straight connection and really it just push fits on there. So you just push it up and then when you want to remove it again, just pull back on the little collar and it slides back off as nice as you like. Now if you are taking the, the airline and it is going to travel down uh, say underneath the boiler um, and you need to do a right angle obviously this is why we've supplied you with this one don't try to bend the pipe too much yourself otherwise you will just kink it so this this allows you just to be able to travel that way okay so that brings us to the next part which is the airline itself now we have supplied you with four uh, meters of airline which should be more than sufficient uh, for the job if you do need extra airline um, you can get it from ourselves uh, just go on to keepflowing.com um, and and you can pick that up from ourselves but it's highly unlikely that you're going to need this okay at the end of the airline uh, one end is going to connect onto flow and at the other end is going to travel down through the floor go along and then this T is going to connect onto uh, your water pipe and that's the part where the water pipe comes along the bottom of the property and then just disappears up into the property itself that's where you want to just snip uh, uh, with a pair of uh, pipe cutters um, and then just again just a simple push fit uh, and you're good to go okay so now that we've taken a look at what parts actually come in the box with flow I thought I'd take you through a, a few tools that'll make your life a whole lot easier when installing it so the first thing you're going to need is a tape measure obviously to make sure that you've got the holes that are the correct uh, length what you're also going to need is a spirit level okay and it's handy if you actually do put the markings and I'll show you a little bit more of, on that later on uh, the markings for the separation of the holes uh, to put flow on so a little spirit level also you need a pencil now generally you'll find your electric cables will come directly vertically out of sockets so above them or below them um, it's extremely rare that you would ever see a cable actually come uh, out of a, a, a box sideways but nevertheless if you do have one of these they're quite handy they're just a little uh, voltage tester and what that does is it will beep beep um, to let you know where the uh, cable is now I am quite in favour of using pilot holes before uh, putting any screws into walls. I find it more accurate 
and I also uh, find that it doesn't make as much of a mess. So if you have a little fine drill bit, what you just use is a cordless drill here, okay? But a little fine drill bit, what that will do is obviously make your pilot hole. If you don't have that, anything that's sharp and pointy, such as a very, very fine screwdriver, you can just drive it into the wall a little bit just to make an impression. It doesn't have to go right through. If you have a long screw, same thing, very pointy, put that in. Or in fact, a brattle, um, which is perfect for the job. Um, would, uh, would drive in for the pilot hole as well. It means that whenever it comes to actually screwing uh, uh, your, you, know, you can put your screws in, uh, that's not a problem uh, whenever you use a little pilot hole. But when it comes to using these butterfly bolts, you've got to use um, a larger drill bit. Now you can either use a spade bit like this. Okay, this is just for hollow walls that you would use um, these particular uh, butterflies. So you can use this little spade bit which is 13 millimeters um, in uh, diameter um, or indeed just a, a typical uh, drill bit here which is 13 millimeters as well. And as I say your cordless drill comes in there. Now whenever it comes to actually attaching uh, the parts uh, or flow to the wall using those screws. I, you won't see me use a cordless drill for that. I'll only use it for drilling here. And actually the 13 millimeter bit will also work for getting the airline down through the floor. So it, it just does both jobs. So that's a handy thing to have and the cordless drill. Set that off to one side. As I say, you won't see me use a cordless for actually screwing it in because cordlesses can over tighten very, very quickly and you, you want to get the feel of it. So just get a star head screwdriver um, for putting the screws in uh, and attach and flow to the wall. Now, sometimes whenever you're using these butterfly bolts, they get a little bit or they, they're just slightly too long and, and your hollow wall is a, a little more narrow. Um, so what you find is when you push this in as tight as you can get it, you'll notice that the end of the bolt itself will end up hitting the, the wall on the other side. So what you may wish to do is actually take a little piece off that. And so for that, what I would suggest is get yourself, a, if you have a vice, great, um, put it in it and, and, uh, and saw it off. Um, or you can just use pliers, you can use these little um, different types of wrenches. You've got your vice grips and so on here and an adjustable wrench also just to hold the bolt so that you can use the hacksaw. Now you will see that I have put an X across this and I'll explain what that's about in a second. But basically you've got um, <coughs> the uh, hacksaw just to take off the end. You'll generally want to take off about 10 mil uh, in any sort of modern day uh, caravan. Okay, so moving on. Uh, once you get flow attached to the wall and you plug it in, um, what you have here is a pair of scissors. You'll use a, a cable tie just to, to tidy up the, the, um, the electricity AC cable. Okay, that or a pair of wire snips will do exactly the same thing. Um, oh, I just popped past something there. Um, once you would cut the end of this butterfly bolt, if it's possible, get um, a file. Um, doesn't really matter what size of file, but just, just to rub off the, the rough edge on the butterfly bolt itself. Okay, now that brings us up to the airline itself. So the airline will come down out of flow and it will either come out at a right angle or it will go straight down through the floor. Either way, uh, you'll find that you're going to have to cut the pipe uh, either at this end or at the other end, which is attached underneath uh, the property to the, the water inlet. Now the reason why I have that red X is never ever when you're cutting pipes and you're using push fit connections use a saw because it just leaves the edge far far too rough, very ragged edge. What you want to use is a pair of proper pipe cutters which just simply snip and as you can see just makes a nice clean cut there and indeed a good pair of garden secateurs will do exactly the same thing but they leave a nice sharp edge nice and smooth um, so that whenever it comes to using them in the push fit connections they'll go straight through and as using my demonstration piece here again as you can see your pipe cutters will also be used when it comes to cutting the domestic water pipe okay just like this you just snap through and then you've got your push fit connection for your tea Okay, so the last property, as I say, was a good example of showing you um, how easy it is to get access to all of the pipework. However, whenever you've got a lot of decking around the property, um, it does make getting access to things like the stopcocks and the draincocks that much more difficult. Now, the whole purpose of flow is to make life an awful lot easier for yourself. And so um, to actually turn off the water uh, at the end of a trip, say you wanted to use the property throughout winter and drain before you leave, 
you would have to climb underneath here um, to get access to the stopcock to turn it off before you would drain down. So obviously um, that's not a good solution. So what I would suggest is that you actually move the stopcock over to the edge of the deck in here and I'll just make another little drawing here for you. So <clears throat> say for example this is the caravan itself okay and this for example would be uh, your decking which could wrap its way around the caravan like so. Now the original uh, stopcock is at this point here and as I say you have a door at the front of the caravan here and so what would happen is normally the alkathene pipework would lead its way over to this stopcock where it then goes up inside the actual caravan. Now as I said you've got a doorway here um, and the decking and you would have to crawl in to switch one of those off. So what I would suggest is that you cut the pipe around here and actually bring the alkathene over to the edge of the decking. Now you would just need an extra piece of alkathene and another stopcock and in effect what you're doing is you're creating a third stopcock but the other ones would be lagged and wrapped up and so on so that they're not vulnerable um, and this would be your new stopcock and what you would do then is just work along the edge of the decking and then make its way over to that um, localized stopcock here. So this would become your third stopcock. Now, so uh, as you can see here in the corner, we have a little blue uh, stopcock, something similar to this, just it's upside down. It's easy to get access to. You just open the door of the decking, simply turn off your water uh, and you're good to go. Okay, so that's the stopcocks done. Now, um, drain cocks as well um, are a bit of an issue here. Um, we don't need them whenever we're using flow because we're going to push the water around the system and out of the outlets um, and we're not going to use these drain cocks uh, underneath for that draining process. Um, as you can see with the decking here, um, if you had a long pipe, now this is just demonstration purposes, but this pipe leading over to the edge of the van for these drain cocks would be much longer. And, and because of that, if you didn't go climb underneath and drain them down, they could be actually quite vulnerable when it comes to uh, uh, frosts and so on. So because we don't need them, um, we can actually remove them. Now, I'll say again, uh, just as before, make sure to consult your handbook um, that came with the, uh, the caravan um, or speak to the manufacturers and identify which strain cocks are for the fresh water side. Okay, so and make sure that they are not the central heating ones. What we're going to do here is we're going to cut um, the uh, dead leg, as we would call it, remove that, and we're going to stop end it. If for some reason it was a central heating one that you did cut through, water will come pouring out, um, but it will be coloured. It will be coloured either blue or pink or something like that, and that's showing the antifreeze in there. Basically, just get a stop end on there as quickly as possible. Now, you will lose a little bit of pressure in the boiler. It's not the end of the world. Really, all you need to do is use the little key that came with the boiler uh, and just bring more water in and build that pressure back up in the boiler. Again, the best people to speak to are the boiler manufacturer, and they're very well versed on this type of thing and they'll be able to help you out. So it's the fresh water ones and as I say we're just going to cut through. Now what you want to do is keep this pipe as short as possible leading out of this joint. Really what we're looking for is a, as much of an L shape here as possible. So what I would suggest is you leave 40 millimeters um, for a, a cut or an inch and five eighths and we're going to put this stop end on. So I have a little mark here and just bring that back to the mark. Just get to the uh, right length and clip it off. Water will start to pour out at this point. Just get a stop end which is push fit and push it on there as quick as possible. Now I'm also suggesting that you don't actually take away the strain cock because you can always keep it there in an emergency but to stop any um, insects or anything like that crawling up this bare end it would just be more hygienic to put another stop end on there and again just keep it in situ but you can keep the two parts uh, close together and now whenever we push air through there won't be any significant amount of water in there and a matter, as a matter of fact the air will probably lick it out of there as well and push it on up the pipework. Now if you ever do need to um, connect those pipes together. Again, you can actually, if you 40 millimeters will leave you a little bit of space there that you can get your fingers behind and pull that little lug uh, backwards. And then what you could do is just use uh, a simple straight and the same thing for the other end, just to join the two ends together. Okay, so now that we've done that, um, um, what I think we'll do is get inside and let's get flow fitted.